understand how to uh, excel uh, and how to master uh, our performance because the interview is defined as a performance. It's important that we uh, uh, bring and we sell ourselves uh, as in our in the best of our possibility. So, first of all, we have to make sure that um, we research the right health board, the right trust. Okay, that is something that can be uh, easily. Uh, we can have an easy access to uh, several uh, recruitment agencies that they can help us to match which kind of organization we would like to join and try to get an interview. So we've got a difference that it's important to value, especially the lifestyle and the quality time with our families. So it's not just to find a job. It's important to have a holistic, holistic vision. So I will, I will say that it's important to, it's remarkable to understand where we are going, okay? Where we are going and uh, the uh, website, the NHS jobs, uh, it's the pivotal uh, place where we can find all the uh, vacancies for the NHS, which is, you know, the National Health Service uh, in UK. Uh, and the keywords for our research, they're gonna be for sure, theater nurse, theater scrub, Okay, operating room, nurse, and scrub. Um, how to um, review our our um, vacancy? So it's important to understand the um, hallmarks and the main uh, characteristics for our job. Okay, uh, every job description, when it's published on the website. They have got job description, description and personal specification. Once we are online to fill the form for our uh, for the vacancy, for the vacancy, it's very important to study in advance the hallmarks request in the job description and personal specification. So we have to meet certain criteria. Okay? All the criteria are in a kind of list all written in the job description and personal specification. Uh, filling the online form for, uh, for the vacancy, okay? To send our, um, our um, description, um, it's important to create uh, also not just uh, an order of our, what we achieve, but especially some examples, real life, real job, uh, life example of what we've done and what we achieved with certain numbers. For example, we have to include the courses and the certificates and all the trainings that we got, but at the side of every uh, courses and certificate, it's very important to reach a good score, to reach a good score in this preliminary part when we send the application, it's important even to write the achievement in the daily life, working life. And uh, I will say it's important, for example, if you did some courses for management, uh, some courses, uh, specify how you daily use those new skills, okay? For example, managing people, dealing conflicts, okay? Um, once we review the job description and we wrote the additional information necessary to fulfill all the uh, all the areas, we have to wait for the in charge, the manager in charge of the uh, department, theater department that we applied for, and ask for an informal visit. Ask for an informal visit. Uh, once with the management, we are agreed. Uh, for the day and time of this informal visit, uh, it's not just an introduction to the to the new to the new team, but it's to understand the expectation of the management uh, about the new staff to hire. So the main question that I would ask 
to uh, uh, to uh, to the managers during the informal visit is what do you expect from your new team from your new team member uh, what are the short and long term plan for this theater for your management because you at the end of the informal visit you want to study in depth all the information that they gave you okay for example in theater the relationship between theater staff recovery staff ward uh, bed uh, availability all of these things you can discuss with the managers so you will leave an insight and you can spend this additional knowledge during the interview okay so uh, one the day of the interview, of course, it's very important, the dress code uh, and the approach, the body language with, uh, with the panel. Uh, the day of the interview, as you might know, you will always have two or three uh, band six and one band seven. So a panel of two or three people that uh, in a preliminary uh, way, they organized certain questions, certain question, and every question has got a score level to uh, hit the, the score level, the highest score level. We uh, have to make sure that we mention example or examples, working example, and especially keywords that we are supposed to bring in our interview okay based on these keywords based on the example uh, uh our answers are scored give a value and at the end will be matched with the best performing uh candidate so following the um the slide sheet the main resources that we got for sure comes from the code of conduct the NHS code of conduct. So a part of this, we got our NMC code, the professional standards for nurses. So all the uh, criteria that we have to meet about liability, professionalism, uh, passion for improvement, okay? And for every question that they will ask you, it's fundamental, it's fundamental it's pivotal to uh, mention the patient, okay? The patients are the core and the center of our activity. Around the patients uh, rotate all the, uh, all the process, all the caring process, not just in theater, okay? Um, then another question that uh, basic, the main, the main, the main and the main resources that we can find are the five step safety surgeries. Okay, so we have to be confident and competent uh, in uh, discussing, explaining, uh, and timing ourselves because we don't want to be too, um, we don't want to talk too much about one uh, point, but we have to go straight to the core and then core to the, to the questions and then explaining with examples. So the five-step uh, safety surgeries uh, is part of the national protocol that includes initial briefing, the safety briefing that we do every, we do every, uh, in, for every session. Then the U checks, uh, the World Health Organization check, safety list check that is divided in three parts that we are supposed to know, we all know as professionals. Uh, sign in, time out, and sign out. So at, at the end of every list, the importance of the debriefing, okay? And the debriefing goes uh, in that macro area of the auditing process, okay? It will be very useful for the auditing process. Um, other resources uh, are the national and local uh, safety standards for invasive procedures. Uh, the abbreviation is not SIP and LOTSIP. So they describe the protocols that we have to uh, follow 
during uh, every invasive procedures and in theater is what we do. Uh, then we have to be confident, competent in discussing how to face, how to cope uh, incidents, okay? Uh, the reporting process that can be uh, written, verbal, and uh, uh, electronically made. So the data IT system, okay? All of these are part of the main questions for, for a job interview as scrub nurse in the NHS and not just in the NHS. Okay, so our aim is to score I. And as I said at the beginning, the interview is a performance, okay? Uh, the interviewer, no, the panel, they don't know our background, okay? Uh, they don't know our professional approach. They don't know all the courses and the trainings that we attended. They don't know how skills we are. So it's very important to create a mental structure process to express uh, in a clear, with a clear method, all our all our skills. Okay. So working on keywords is crucial because on keywords we base the scoring point. Okay, the scoring level. Um, we mentioned before body language. So how to uh, um, approach and how to um, communicate, communicate that we are the right person and uh, uh, the best candidate of that session, okay? So one of the easiest example uh, to check our body language is to, as, I, uh, as we can see here, is to uh, make practice of our answers uh, in front of the mirror, okay? Uh, and uh, we can uh, tweak our approach. We can, we can tweak our presentation. So the informal visit is essential, I would say, because we can have from the management, the people that they will, will hire us, we, we will have an insight to the workplace and especially some tips uh, the points that they want to focus our attention, okay? Um, we can even meet our future uh, colleagues. And so it's always a positive impact that we give to, uh, to the management prior to the interview. So we have to demonstrate that we got um, confidence and competence of our field in theater. Uh, patient safety is the core. Everything is around it. And we have to make sure that we communicate with the panel that we are able to manage an effective communication. Okay, another important uh, keywords, effective communication within a multidisciplinary team. How do we perform this kind of effective communication, okay? We have to bring examples okay? in our working life. We have to bring example very, very quick, very uh, brief example to show them that we are good communication. We are communicators. We are um, active listener, okay? To be a good communicator, you have to be an active listener. So, and we are team players. So team players within the team towards our teammates, but especially we have to um, uh, show them that we are proactive. We want to support the management. So be a team player, not a dual aspect within the team and also towards the management because we must be able to support the management, especially to be in charge uh, in absence of the band six, in absence of the band seven, of the in charge. To do that, we have to always uh, show 
that we know how to delegate appropriately and make an appropriate escalation process. The core is as team member, as in charge, as deputy or as manager, we cannot do everything on our own, okay? We have to rely on our team, rely on our uh, teammates uh, to deliver the best care for our patients. Okay. The core is always the patient safety and the care for our. So delegation, it's important, but it's based on competence and confidence of our colleagues, competence and confidence of the teammates. Once we realize that we there are some uh, issues or lacks, we have to address those and improve, empower, you know, the, empower our staff with additional trainings, with supervision simply, okay? Uh, but also, also be able to delegate at the right time uh, to the right, to the right staff, right staff member. Then be confident in explain how the ex escalation process works. Okay, the, um, a good staff member wants to gather all the information and to sort at our level first. Once we realize as staff member, as deputy, as managers, we realize we need an the um the um, a scenario the example uh exceed our competencies okay we have to promptly escalate to the managers okay to the higher level to do that we have to be proactive what we want to bring in the interview is that we are not just good communicators we are not just motivators for the team but we know how to manage every aspect of our job. Uh, and we know the people, the right people to involve. So the escalation process is based on this. Escalation process means gather, be proactive, not simply report, but gather all the information, analyze the data, and then report to the manager with one or two, preferably, uh, alternatives of solutions, okay? For this reason, we show to the, during the day of the interview that we know the process, but we are proactive as well. So you bring a report and with you, you have got already a series, one, two, three alternatives to sort the issues out. And then we'll, the, the decision-making process will be completed by the manager because we did an effective escalation. During the day of the interview, we want to point the accent and the attention of our, about our continuous professional development, which means the courses and training that we already done, but looking to the future, okay? We give a look to the future and we see ourselves in three or five years to decide what kind of pathway, professional pathway we want to undertake. Generally in theater, uh, as scrub nurse, you want to uh, uh, highlight uh, the pathway that you prefer, which is gonna be clinical or managerial. Um, Within the clinical uh, field, you will leave the uh, surgical advanced nurse practitioner, uh, or also we can go towards the practice educational process. Okay, then so uh, in the other uh, pathway, the other pathway is more managerial. So uh, achieving certifications. Uh, for example, taking the LEADS NHS program, uh, 
or funding uh, programs such as ILM uh, management and leadership, leadership and management program that are a third party uh, course, courses, different level of courses uh, funded by the NHS and uh, uh, supplied by uh, ACT, which is a third party uh, educational uh, um, company. Um, once we do this, we want to, because sometimes uh, during the interview, we got only a few questions. For example, talking, please let's to talk uh, about yourself uh, and why you are the right candidate for this, for this job. And then some scenarios, examples, that then we do, we do now. And, but sometimes what we want to tell to the commission, what do we want to tell to the panel? Uh, we don't find the right uh, questions, the question that goes straight to the point. So we have to learn how to be uh, concise, concise, to fit inside every question, our, our specialty, uh, our trainings and our, um, and our skills, okay. Then sharing the knowledge and lead by example are keywords that empower our presentation, empower our performance. Okay, sharing the knowledge is not simply uh, to uh, attend courses and push our knowledge, but it's important during the audit days during uh, simple shifts, okay, to talk to our colleagues, understand their practice, understand if we are uh, compliant with the most advanced and available practice. To do that, it's very important to um, weekly, I will say, check the health board uh, or the NMC website, internet for the health board, because there is the area, every health board has got an area of policies, okay? And the policies, they are subject to uh, improvement, to updates uh, over the time, over the time. So make sure that our panel, the interviewer, they know that we are able to lead by example. We don't simply delegate, but we are active listener. We are able to support our staff, our colleagues, sharing the knowledge and giving the reason why we adopt a practice. Okay. Giving them, you giving to the uh, staff and to your colleague that you know the tools how to use the right tools, how to um, research for those tools. And one of these examples is for sure, the policies and guidelines of our health board, the uh, NMC, uh, the NMC code, and uh, the NHS code of conduct. So you can mention those. And the main hallmarks that they bring, okay, which is, patient safety, uh, professional responsibilities, uh, passion for improvement, okay? And of course, the be pride, be proud and uh, pride in what we do. Going ahead, we got our, our target is to be the strongest candidate, of course. And what we want to highlight during the interview is that we are honest, we are humble, ambitious, okay? Versatile, every adjective that we can see here, quick learner, quick learner as, as we say, and team motivator, empathetic, approachable. What means? Means that everything is reflected on two way. One towards the patients, okay? 
in every question we have to mention why we act like that, because it's for the patient's safety. And from a second approach for the team, okay, to strengthen the team bond, to improve the, uh, the care and the uh, standards, high standards that we want to deliver our care. Then, uh, patient safety, dignity, respect, confidentiality. So we must be able to uh, extensive talk about those topics. Where do we find the keys to discuss about these topics? Are the values and behaviors of the health board. And uh, all of these values and behaviors are uh, published, are public, uh, and uh, easy to reach on the website of the health board, the trust that we want to apply, that we are applying for. So another aspect that is crucial and is remarkable will make the difference on how we perform and how we score during interview are the concept of problem, problem solver attitude, so all the process, and the psychological safety. So to be a uh, problem solver, to bring the attitude of a problem solver in theater, uh, you, it's beneficial to mention some literature. For example, there are different methods of problem solving. The very popular one is known with the acronyms of PDSA. Uh, which means plan, do, study, and act. Basically, means that when we face an issue, okay, a colleagues or directly colleagues report to us, or directly we have to face an issue, the problem solving approach wants, first of all, to have a clear, a square, okay, square idea of what we do. First of all, we want to assess that the patient safety, the patient is safe in a safe, stable condition. Gathering all the information that we got, all the information available. Once we gather all the information, we want to analyze those information, those data, and create alternative solutions. So we can uh, uh, we can face we can face the issues in two different ways. Then once we got two or three alternatives, we have to pick the most effective one at that moment. So act. We start it, plan, act now. Once we act, it's important to remember as problem solver that there is a continuous assessment process. So with a, within a period of time, we have to go and check how effective our solution is. Why? The, the meaning is that we have to amend, tweak ongoing our solution, okay? Because there is no one, there is no always one right solution. There is a, uh, a range of solution that we have to apply. And once the um, solution, the alternatives is put in place, we have to assess it. Once we assess it, then we have to evaluate the outcomes, okay? To improve it. So simply evaluate the outcomes. Psychological safety. Uh, during the interview, we make sure that the patient is the center of our our, uh, we deliver always our care, looking at the patient, center of our activities. Then we make sure that the interviewer, the panel, they know what kind of uh, candidate we are because we are active listener, we are versatile because we want to learn more. And we are good motivators for the team because we bring a positive, positive approach, okay? And we are approachable, supportive, but 
the most important things is to mention the psychologically safety mentality, mindset. Psychological safety mindset. Uh, working close to the human factor team and the practice educator, I daily see the importance of during, especially during the audit day, to the accent, to put the accent on psychological safety. It means that culture, it means that we promote within our team, within our management, at every single level, we promote the culture of speak out, the culture of be, um, being a, a good listener, but especially a good observer. Okay, good observer. Uh, psychological safety means that every staff member, whatever is their role, they feel welcoming, they feel um, they feel in a safe environment and they feel, um, how can I say, uh, strong enough to speak out, to talk to the team whenever they see that something is wrong, that something is not clear, okay? that something can be an issue, can be an hazard for our environment, for the patient's safety. To be very extensive on this process, psychological safety is applied also, especially to the student ODP, student nurses, that they attend theater sessions. So a student must be welcoming. A student must be, um, we have to explain them the area, we have to explain them the environment, and we have to tell them to question the staff Every time they don't understand something, every time they think maybe there is a risk for the patient, maybe the positioning of the patient is not ideal on the surgery, on the surgical table, all of these little things, because they will help to improve the safety standard in the area. Okay. So be polite, be welcoming, positive attitude, sharing the information. Uh, don't leave the staff member, especially new staff member, or as I say, the example of a student in an angle. But just show them, explain them the process, what we're doing. So when we say during the interview that we are aware and we daily apply the concept of psychological safety, okay, the culture of safety in speaking out, talking when we see something, not highlight, address, to the in charge, address to the uh, surgeon, address to the professionals involved in theater. That from your point of view, there is something not clear, something that can be an hazard. It's a great step to be successful during a job interview. Question and scenarios. Okay. Um, the main question and scenarios can be the panel first of all most of the time they will ask you tell us about yourself why you are the right candidate what can you bring to the team okay i suggest to be to fulfill these questions to create your own personal structure mind structure mind structure uh, I tend to use abbreviation. For example, the ABC, A, my attitude. So I describe what kind of professional I am. I'm versatile, I'm humble, I'm ambitious with A, no? With letter A, your attitude. Then I'm an active listener, uh, problem solver, problem solver, all of these objectives. And then you have to bring little example when you daily use those, uh, those uh, this kind of attitude. Uh, then I tend to use in the abbreviation ABC, A, the attitude, B, the background. What I've done, my background, personally, I qualified, uh, I got my degree in Italy, 
uh, my master in Italy, then I moved uh, in the UK after an experience in Italy of six months working in theater. I wanted to, so just to explain your background, then within the background, all the uh, skills, the trainings, the courses that you achieved, okay? And letter C, it might be uh, the competencies. So you are competent and confident with specialties such as uh, general surgeries, orthopotrauma and orthopedics, ophthalmology, and that's it. So just trying to create your mental map because you've got a limited time. Having a limited time means that you want to be concise, but fulfill all the questions. With this kind of mental structure, we can cover all the aspects. And my example is the ABC abbreviation. So attitude and uh, background and competencies. Skills. So you can fulfill the first question, why you are the ideal candidate. Then other questions can be, how you manage a scrub nurse, circulator, practitioner? How you manage a discrepancy in the instruments, in the swab count, shark count? So we have to bring there our competence, that we got a clear idea, step by step, we know the protocol, what to do, okay? So it can be straightforward. Then another question, sharp injuries protocol, what do you do? Not just then uh, to give the plus this answer, sharp injuries, generally you can see it in a direct perspective, but you can assist to a sharp injury. For example, surgeon working, there is a sharp injury, but maybe the junior doctor is an assistant doesn't speak out, is shy or not confident. So in that location, you know how to deal, you know how to support. So this is a good point. Answer, not always, answer the question, not simply directly, but also indirectly, what you will do if you assist at this episode, okay? You let the panel know that you open-minded, okay? You can see, 360, the vision is 360 degree, not simply focus on yourself, but we are focused on the patient and on the environment. Uh, another uh, tip that I tend to give is to uh, structure our answer based on three aspects. The aspect is um, answer the patient point of view. So I answer this question looking at the patient point of view, looking at the team or individual point of view, how I act, and look at the organization point of view, okay? For example, we say the sharp injuries, perfect. Patient point of view, what happened? Is there any contamination on the field for the patient uh, patient's safety? Has the patient uh, surgical site been contaminated? These kind of things. Then. And there are more, several others. Then, uh, I'm timing myself as well, so I don't want to be too long. Then, patient point of view touched. Sharp injuries, team or individual point of view. Team means what I'm going to do for my team, supporting them if they had the sharp injuries, what I'm going to do as individual if I, I've got the sharp injuries. And then, organizational point of view. There is the report. There is all the data process. There is all the report to management, okay? And when we do report, we, for the organizational point of view, the third point, we want to make a note. Make a note and address those notes of improvement. Notes of improvement. So for the next time, I suggest that we have to use the sharp part in this way. Uh, we have to share the information with other colleagues because it can happen to other colleagues as well. So just to improve the practice, improve the protocols. Other questions, the 
ANTT techniques, they can ask you, they can ask you the cleaning, disinfection, and sterilization process, how to manage the specimen, okay? Different kind of specimen, we all know. Uh, histology, cytology, microbiology, frozen sections, all of these we can mention and we can do. Uh, at the end, kind of support, we have to ask. At the end, there would be, even if most of the time, generally, always, the panel asks you, have you got any question for us? Uh, so always prepare a good question. The easiest one is what kind of support you will be, you will offer us, okay? And then what kind of funded programs, what kind of courses I can have from the health board, from the trust, because I want to achieve, I see myself achieving this level of management uh, or uh, I want to undertake the clinical pathway. So I want to work through this part. So uh, I think we finished more or less 41 minutes talking. I hope I gave you the right, right uh, knowledge to open a bigger, a bigger topic, a bigger conversation. Of course, uh, I'm always available with my personal mail for any uh, any explanation in depth of some topics that you would like to talk. And if you got now any questions, I will be more than happy to try answers as right now. Yeah, to answer right now. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, depending on where you are. My name is Nijin Ajampo from Sigai, Rwanda. So I would like to thank so much the presenter of the day, Michel Santolo, for his contribution in Theology Global. So this is the time, if anyone is having comment, question, this is your time. Thank you. Hello, I just want to the questions on the chat box. The so, chat box. Yes, yeah, there is a question on the chat box. Okay. This one is asking which forms to fill. I think the person has applied in NHS and the person has certificates. So the progress of any application field for music. I think maybe the, because I couldn't, um, the question is uh, somehow going to be just read it out. So the person is asking which forms to fill. I have applied in NHS and I have, I have certificates. The progress of my application field for unknown reason. The person is asking can can the person proceed? Okay. So, Hello? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. So I want to just, my my speakers are not very good. So I just want you to understand. You wrote in the in the chat box as well, yeah? Yeah, the person wrote on the chat box. I'm just trying to read it out. Okay, okay. So you applied in the NHS and you have the certificate. The progress of my application failed for unknown reason. My advice were, uh, advisor were my, oh, okay. So let's talk, first of all, uh, you got your PIN number, have you? Hello? Can you hear me? Maybe he's having a network issue. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm not the one that asked me the questions. The person asked the question. So when, is, when you ask your question and answer, so I try to read it out. I'm not sure if the person is still online. Okay. So you, you can have hello. The question is you don't know. I think the person is online. Sorry? I think the person is online. Yeah. 
The question are all like Alex, can can you can you um can you unmute yourself? Okay, possible questions you want to list. And then join perfect. Okay. The possible questions are in the in the PowerPoint that I can share with all of you. So and we can read them, okay? Okay. Possible question are first of all, talk about yourself and why you are the right candidate for this vacancy. Okay. This is the first what question. Is the answer, I guess? Pardon? What will be the answer like this type of question? Okay. The answer, yeah, the answer for this question, as I said before is to create a mental structure, okay? Why you are the right candidate? The mental structure is, my suggest is to give you an abbreviation so you don't forget what to say. A, B, C, A, attitude, okay? So you start and introduce yourself. Okay, my name is, I come from, uh, then I'm the right candidate to this job because I am. A, attitude you think in your mind. I am an active listener. I am a versatile professional, okay? I care for my patients, okay? Then I'm a problem solver and is everything written, then I share uh, the organizer of the this meeting has got uh, the PDF file of the presentation. So, and is everything written here? We went through all the objectives that we can use. Okay, I'm a very ambitious person because I've done my master. I'm doing my continuous professional development. I'm an empathetic. So another keyword. All the keywords are written in this PDF presentation uh, slide sheets. Okay, so I'm a team player. Why you're a team player? And you explain why. Okay. So you start answering the first part, your attitude, A, B, C, B, your background. So I got this kind of certificates. I'm working towards these uh, qualifications. Okay. I've done the course for the strikers, for the size, for, no, you know, all the equipment or things like that, that you use in theater. Then third point that you can used to fulfill A, B, C, C competencies, okay? I'm very competent and confident with uh, sharing the knowledge because I've done the course for mentoring, so to support students, okay? Then why you are the strong, the, the right candidate to get the job? Because I master the concept and the method of psychological safety and problem solver. Can you explain what's that, okay? What we've done now, you know, so this is the first question. Then we got other questions. How you manage a discrepancy with uh, instruments, count, swap count, sharp count. Uh, sharp injuries protocol, uh, tell me about the sharp injuries protocol, what do you know about it? How do you preserve privacy and confidentiality? And other questions. Is everything written in the PDF that we've done? How do you preserve privacy and confidentiality? So first of all, be sure that we don't disclosure information from the patient notes with the staff that they are not involved in the patient care. Always, for example, basic example, you have to say as that. Um, I always close my account on the uh, computers, always log out from my mails. I always use the confidential bin, dispose the documents in the appropriate confidential bin. Okay, then another question. Tell me about the ANTT, aseptic uh, no-touch technique. And you explain the two parameters, oh, surgical and not surgical, right? Then cleaning, disinfection, sterilization, what's that? manage specimen and so those can be then we can have other scenario that i'm thinking about for example 
uh, there is a leak in theater from the roof. It's a small leak or it's a big leak. You're scrubbing. How do you manage? Okay. So first of all, as I said, it's important for you to remember when you answer a question, the three points. Patient point of view, individual or team point of view, organizational point of view. So if in this scenario that they give you, there is a leak, patient point of view, what do we do? You answer and you say, I make sure that the patient is safe, means if there is a leak, I will put an absorbable pad or, or a, a bucket or and a sign. I will put a sign there. But if it's a big leak, I will straight ask to change theater, to stop it because it's not safe for the patient. Okay, might be electrical items involved in so there will be an accident. Okay, then this is patient point of view. Then we got individual team point of view. I make sure that my colleagues, they are aware of the hazard, that this leak. And we use, if we use a bucket, we have to use a sign, we have to use an absorbable pad, and we use the right one, because there are some, some absorbable pad specifically designed for the floor, because they are not slippery, and some designed for the patient, okay? The Inco pad, for example. Those, if you put that on the floor, they will be slippery, it's a double hazard. So, and we would, when we will, then organizational point of view, Organizational point of view, I report. I make sure the management of what's going on. I make sure that is reported to work and state department because I want to know when they sort it out. <coughs> on top of this, we have to make sure that the day after, the week after, the theater is used, the theater is, can be used or not. So this is another question that we can use. And so what I'm giving you are the questions, but especially the mindset, how to approach and fulfill every question. Okay. So to introduce yourself, because you are the best candidate, ABC, attitude, all the adjectives that you got there, background, all the courses, all your work experience, experiences, and C, competencies. Then, for each question, it's important, three points. Answers, patient's point of view, uh, team, individual point of view, organizational point of view. Yeah. Let's see some other questions. I think, I suppose we fulfill, we, we answer more or less. Thank you so much, Isher, for this brilliant presentation. Yeah. For Thank any you. advice, for any advice about NHS number, about, because it's important, as I said in the beginning, um, when we do our application online, in the additional information, it's very important that you write the additional information against the job description and personal specification. So any job description, any personal certification has got certain points. And when you write the uh, additional information within the electronic applications, you have to fulfill that, that uh, areas. In this process, you got high, high chance to get shortlisted. When you are shortlisted, you don't go simply to the interview. Before, in advance, you ask for an informal visit to have an insight, no, to have some tips, what are the areas that they prefer to focus the attention. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Michel, for a brilliant presentation. Pleasure, pleasure. I think the time is very short. Uh, it would be better if you give us a personal email in order to keep in touch. Yeah. And then, Greg, thank you so much. I wish we shall have another session in order to have more information about yeah. NHS system. So uh, let's welcome the president of TORG for 
closing remarks. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Jean Paul. I really want to say thank you, Michelle, for the presentation. It was very straightforward. Um, you mentioned the key aspects that is needed, um, especially in terms of aptitude, background, and competencies that you mentioned. Those are the areas that the um, employer uh, is really going to be looking at for um, interviews to be successful and other things like that. You emphasize delegation, escalation protocols. Even in Ireland, they emphasize those areas as well. You have to know how to escalate things like they don't expect you to know everything, but provided you know how to escalate to senior uh, line managers and know how to put things um, appropriately, you know who to report to in case there, uh, there is any issue, um, which is exactly what you mentioned. You emphasize continuous uh, CPDs, sharing knowledge, and most importantly, acting within your scope of practice um, which is really, really good because even any scenario, anything you're mentioning, any aspects you, uh, you've been asked to clarify, it has to be within your scope of practice. And as much as possible, um, one needs to project oneself as a professional and as knowledgeable as, um, because it's not just going to be competency based, like you mentioned, knowledge would be very, very essential as well. So I must say thank you so much, uh, Michelle, for that presentation. I believe, as John Paul said, uh, the, the time was very short. Um, hopefully, we will bring you back in for another stage of that presentation in terms of requirements from scratch. And um, so that's because a lot of information is out online. People don't really want to get scammed, especially when you want to travel from one country to another. You want to know where to get the right information and how to do that rightly. So definitely, um, thank you for sharing relevant knowledge. Uh, we look forward to bringing you back one of these days, I think maybe early next year for a second part of the presentation. And I must say thank you to all the leaders of the Education and Training Committee of CORG. Um, Idris is here, uh, he introduced uh, at the start, and John Paul is here as well. And all the leaders that are um, unavoidably have sent today, and I really want to say thank you to everyone, all the leaders and members joining us from different countries. I think we have people from Pakistan, um, Rwanda, Nigeria, and um, not sure, um, and more. Thank you so much for the registration, for taking the time out of no time to join this session. We always have a webinar in two weeks, every two weeks. So there is going to be another one. I think the next one would be on pain management. So um, that was a brilliant presentation. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And uh, good morning, good evening, good night. Anyway, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you so much. I just wanted to add one thing. Okay. Um, for the requirements to get the NMC number, UK uh, pin number. I'm, I mean, for the require, uh, I'm qualified uh, scrub nurse registered even also in Malta, in uh, Malta, Island Malta. So I'm I'm happy to share you know, the, the right documents okay. and the right uh, uh, tips to apply for the professional bodies in UK and in Malta. Thank you so much. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Thank you. We will definitely bring you back to continue the presentation. Thank you, everyone. Bye, bye, bye. Thank you all the best. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you.